here. Thanks to all of you for joining. Uh, as I get started, you've probably all heard uh, that old saying about working with kids and dogs. So tonight you get to join me in working with my dogs. Um, normally my wife Barb would be here and watching them, but I had my second COVID or my second uh, vaccine yesterday. And uh, just to make sure that I was okay, she took my job watching the granddaughters today and she's spending the night there. So we're gonna have fingers crossed today that Captain Jack and Bella behave themselves. If they don't, I've got a, a backup plan, but uh, we'll keep our fingers crossed. So today, uh, I'm very glad that you're all interested in podcasting because quite frankly, it is the new radio, isn't it? Uh, many of us, I'm, I'm assuming many of you probably are, have listened to podcasts or are avid listeners of podcasts. I know that before I started doing it, I did because I really love to listen while I'm either uh, walking the dogs or, or driving in the car. And I, I hear so many interesting, fascinating podcasts of all different genres. And that's why I think it's so important for you as a Toastmaster, as a communicator, to think about doing podcasts, whether it's for fun or, uh, or as a hobby, as I might say, or as part of your business. We'll talk about that all today. Uh, the first part, we're going we're gonna to really kind of get down into the logistics of it. The second half of the day, I really like to have be kind of an interview type thing, really kind of a podcasting. I want to, I want to do this whole radio talk show thing. Sometimes I feel like I'm Fraser Crane and, and I know I've got Joanna as my producer today, but we're going to talk a little bit because I want to make sure that you have your questions answered about the ins and outs of podcasting. All right. This is the first part where I want to hear back from you. I want to get a little bit of early engagement. And as all of us know, as speakers, at the end of your speech, you, you want to have a goal. You want your audience to think, feel, or act in some way. I have that same goal, but I want to make sure that I know exactly what that is. So uh, with the help of Joanna, I would really like to be able to ask some questions of you. And the question is, what do you want to know? After this program is over, what is it that you'd like to know? What is it like you'd want, want to walk away with? What would make this course, course worth your time investment today? So please keep it short. Uh, I'm not necessarily going to answer them right now. I just want to make sure that I've got them into my agenda. So Joanna, this is a time I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear from the people. Talk to me. What do you want to know? Who has the first comment for Dan? Karen Tyson, you have your hand raised. Go ahead. Hi, Karen. I'm listening. Please make sure you unmute yourself, Karen. And by the way, as you're doing that, I, I can see I'm going to answer the things, I, the, the chats as well. But I'm, I'm sorry. Gonna, oh, there you go. I couldn't unmute. <laughs> so, now I can. Um, I want to know uh, um, if it's going to be feasible for me to create a podcast for this nonprofit that I um, am running. Okay, great. Uh, feasible as in um, uh, financially? Uh, no, just logistically and, okay. and technically and, and creatively. <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you. Who else do we have? Who else would like to raise their hand to ask Dan a question? Robin Lee, please unmute yourself and ask your question, ma'am. All right, mine is around um, what is the like minimum requirements of time and consistency to be effective in your podcast and in, in growing your podcast? Thank you. I'm, we're, we're going to talk about that. I'm glad to hear that. Thank you for the question. Perfect. We'll, we'll talk about that. Who else do we have? We have Amy Bartholomew. Hi, Amy. Hi, Dan. 
I was curious if if it's more effective if you interview someone else or if you just pretty much have your own thing that you do. Oh, I'm glad you asked that because we're going to talk about that. Perfect. I'm glad to, to know that. Uh, Joanna, I'm going to actually take a couple of quick chats here. Um, I want to know how to start podcasting. Joyce will talk about that. Sherry asked, I want to learn a little bit more on doing podcasts uh, since it's part of the pathways. Great. Uh, we can talk about that. Lindy said a clearer idea of what is truly involved with it. Uh, James said, uh, or James, yeah, James specifically want to know how to make the pre-show process of preparing the recording. Great question. We're going to talk about some of the producing and editing. Um, anybody else have their hand up before I go down some more of the other chats? We have Jeff Campbell with his hand. All right, Jeff. Hey, Dan. Uh, so my question is, in organizing the podcast, just kind of need, you know, the pre-work and then getting the questions set up, following the format, staying organized. That's the big thing for me. Okay. Because my brain kind of goes in so many different directions. Great. Yeah. Not everything you hear in podcasts are all extemporaneous. The best extemporaneous sounding ones are the ones that are organized. Great question. We'll talk about that. Uh, any other hands up, Joanna? Not at the moment, sir. Okay. Oh, I'm going to click. I see I'm one. Look one last one. Okay, hold on one second. I'm gonna read a couple more and then we'll go to that one. Elena said, asked, what are the basics in terms of equipment and platform uh, for distribution? We're definitely talking about that. How do I really create a professional podcast, voiceovers, jingles? Uh, okay, I, I'm not a voiceover. I, I think I know what you're talking about. I'll, I'll add that in. Um, C. Miller, you, oh, use Fiverr, okay. Uh, Patrick, I think you had your hand up, go ahead. He does. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dan. I have the equipment. I have some good content ideas. But uh, how do I actually do do I have uh, I want to sound professional? Do I okay. use voiceovers jingles and I, I, I currently have Spreaker. I don't know if you're familiar with Spreaker. Mm -hmm. um, what what should I use to make it look and sound professional? Okay, those are all great. And um, there's, there's some questions around special software, things like that, uh, structuring interviews and guests. You have all the, it's, uh, it's funny, you have all the questions that I have at least some ideas and answers for you. So we'll get into that uh, here right away. Thank you for engaging. Um, here are the, oh, see, I have Captain Jack barking in the background. I was a little bit concerned about that. I'm going to, I'm, so here's the first, here's the first lesson, everybody. Um, I have actually had him knock over a light stand in the middle of a podcast, just like giving a platform speech, no matter how prepared you are. And you've all given platform speeches, I assume. Prepare for the unexpected because you never know what will happen. Um, and so uh, I hear him barking. I'm, if he does it one more time, I may have to take him upstairs and I'm going to apologize for that. I thought he could make it. Um, here's the seven questions. Lindy, I, and I'm going to, I apologize. I'm going to take literally two minutes to get him upstairs so I don't have to listen and I can focus. Is that okay with everybody? Are we okay with that? That's just great. While you're gone, I will read those seven questions aloud, even though I know all of you can read them for yourselves. Okay. The seven questions that Dan encourages us to consider. Why do you want to podcast? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to mute him while he's telling the dog what to do. Okay. Why do you want to podcast? What will you talk about? Will you have a co-host? Who is your audience? Why will they listen? Will you really care if they listen? Will you want to monetize? Those are a lot of questions. And as we sit and think about those questions, those seven very specific questions, for those of you that want to share in the chat, maybe you can jot down some ideas and some thoughts because many of us are probably sharing many of those. Now is a great time for you to use the chat to share those responses or thoughts that you have.
Dan, welcome back. Thank you. We did have a few comments in the questions to your to your seven questions. There were a few comments in the chat just to catch okay. you up. All right, thank you. I appreciate that. I'll see how my house looks upstairs in a little bit, but that's okay. So let me, oh, we got a lot of questions going in the chat. Let me do this. Uh, Joanna, would you help me with those after I go through these questions? Would you help uh, point some of those chats out to me? Yes, sir. All right. The seven questions about podcasting. Number one, why is it that you want to podcast? What's your why? I know every one of us, and I, I keep going back to platform speaking. What is your why on the podcasting? The reality is, is your why might be, I think it might be fun. I'd like to do it as a hobby. I want to do it as a family thing, or I want to do it as part of my nonprofit. I heard that earlier, or I want to make it part of my business. There's got to be a real why. Now the why, again, it could be something that you want to just try as part of part of your life, made part of a family thing, that's okay. But really at the very beginning, identify why is it that you would want to go to the effort to put on a podcast? Number two, what am I gonna talk about? What do I like? What do I have a passion about? If it's a hobby, is it sports? Is it the arts? Is it entertainment? If it's your business, that's a pretty easy one. You want to talk about what your expertise is, but you want to be really clear about what it is that you want to talk about. This question came up both in the text and uh, with a question. Will you have a co-host? Well, there's a, lot of, uh, there's a lot of thought that goes into whether you want to co-host or not. And the, and, the, and the main thing that you want to think about is, is will the co-host bring value and entertainment to your podcast? I'm going to share with you in just a minute my two podcasts, one that has co-hosts and one that does not. So the answer really isn't, is it good or bad? It depends. And we'll talk a little bit more as we move forward on the co-host question about whether you want one or not, but you wanna to have to think about that. Here's a big one, who's your audience? Who is it that's going to be listening to you or who is it that you want to listen to? And then a big question is why will they listen? And then maybe even a more important question, will you really even care if they listen? If this is a hobby, if this is part of the fun, if this is something that you wanna do for you, you may put this out there to the world and if somebody listens, great, and if not, they, they don't. And then the final question is, do you wanna monetize this? Will you monetize it? And that's an important question for those of you especially who wanna do this for, for professionally. So. Think about these questions, answer them honestly, because they will shape how you build a podcast. So here's my story. I've got two podcasts. Uh, and Lindy very kindly introduced me and talked about both podcasts. I want to share with you why I would be crazy enough to actually do two of them. <laughs> why I would be crazy enough to do two. They have specifically different purposes, different, uh, different audience, and a different end result. So let me share with you sh the Shrimp Tank podcast, which I have been doing the longest. Uh, it is a nationally syndicated podcast based out of Atlanta, Seattle. We were the third city five years, almost five years ago. It is entrepreneur focused. In other words, when I asked who's my audience, the audience is entrepreneurs, CEOs, uh, business owners, uh, anybody who is interested in business leadership, thought leaders, entrepreneur focused. In this podcast, 
I have co-hosts. And how I run my co-host is I have one a week. I have one a week. This is a change because the co-host I'd had with me for four and a half years, Brad Berger, uh, he had to make a decision about stepping back because the podcast was taking, he, he couldn't, well, I shouldn't say it wasn't taking too much time. He couldn't allocate any more time. So I took over sole ownership of the license and I brought on four podcasters, one a week. I'll get into that a little bit more later as to why I have four. But what I found in a podcast where we're interviewing business people, two voices, two host voices that play off each other, that have different personalities, brings great value to the listener. We've had situations where one of us couldn't make it and there's only been one interviewing and it's fallen short. The, 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 the quality of the interview has fallen short. So as I looked at this, this was a no brainer. We needed to keep the co-hosts going because there was a, a, a great energy and, and a great camaraderie between us. You see who our guests are. We're entrepreneur focused, so that's who we have as guests. We run this every week. We live stream it on our Facebook page at 12 o'clock every Wednesday. And then we send it off and, and, and in this one, we get to kind of be more of the talent. So I know there's a lot of questions about production. In this one, I'm fortunate that all I have to do is drop it into Dropbox and they make it pretty and they get it back out to all of the different platforms. And this one must be monetized. Why? Because it costs me, <laughs> I have a substantial investment that I owe to, the, to, to, to Atlanta. And so I have to monetize it. Unleash the podcast is different. This is, pers this is a little more personal. Uh, this, is, this is one where I call it the intersection of business and life. And, and this is a little bit more personal because I kind of deal more with the life balance aspect of being a business leader, being a business professional, maybe being, a, being a, an employee. I host this one by myself and I actually have a mix of guests and sometimes it's just a narration of some of the work that I've written. When I bring on guests, they're usually experts like Karen McNamara who was a guest of mine with her son, Rob. Darren LaCroix was a guest of mine because he's an expert on communications. I do this one twice a month and I do a mix of live stream and recordings. I'm, am I gonna monetize this? Maybe, maybe not. It sounds like probably from what you're hearing, Dan has a business podcast and a hobby podcast, and you'd be right. I have two reasons for doing them. Uh, if if, if someone, were to, someone were to ask me, well, doesn't one take away from the other? I actually think they work very well in tandem. My reasons for doing my big why, which I hadn't shared with you, is to develop my brand, my intellectual property for my business, but also to have fun. So let's talk about how those next steps work. And I'm going to get into a little bit more here of the logistics of podcasting. I saw several, oh, by the way, Joanna, do I have some, some questions I should answer off of the text? Not off the chat. I'm not, I'm not chat, I'm sorry. There were a few comments that you had about, or answers to the questions that you had about, one was fascinating conversations that they have with their friends and they think that they're topics that people, other people would be passionate about. Okay. Um, from Lucia Laura, she wants to share her life experiences that she believes will benefit others. Those are great. Thank, thank you for sharing those because I think those are all very important. And, and that's really where I want to take the second half of today after the break is I'd like to have some conversations regarding that. Let me talk about some of the logistical parts, and there were some questions about this. Here's the deal on equipment. Uh, I don't know if you can see this, but I have a Blue Yeti microphone, a Blue Yeti microphone. Uh, I also have earbuds in that are underneath my shirt and plugged into here, so I'm hardwired into my computer. 
here's the one thing that I can absolutely guarantee you. An audience will put up with mediocre uh, visual. They will not put up with anything but good audio quality. Audio is number one. Now, uh, when we're talking podcast, you might say, well, isn't that only audio? Well, we're gonna talk about whether you want to live stream it or not, and whether you wanna turn your audio into an option as a video. So if you're only audio, it's incredibly important that you have a high quality microphone that is podcast ready. I like Blue Yeti. That there, There's a lot of really good, really good microphones out there. They're going to run in the range of about $150 and up. Uh, if you're looking at a $79 one, it's probably not what you want to get. If you want to run a professional sounding podcast, you want to look for a quality, quality microphone like a Blue Yeti. Uh, I know Amazon obviously has them. b and I'm, I'm a big fan of B&H, which is out of New York. Uh, invest in audio. As we get talking about video, you're going to want to invest in lighting as well. Currently right now, I have four lights on. I've got a light ring right here. I've got a light right here. I've got the main light. And then I purchased for 30 bucks <laughs> uh, what's called an architect light. And it's right here and it's in my face. It, and, it, and, it's, and it's like the sun is hitting on my face. I'm in the basement right now. So I need to have the right lighting. So if you're going to be running a podcast that has dual audio and video, invest first and foremost in good equipment, especially on the audio. I'm a Mac guy. I love GarageBand. I know not everybody has Macs. Uh, I'm not exactly sure what's available for PCs. I know Adobe has good uh, software for creating uh, audio, I believe. But I use GarageBand. It's very simple to use, uh, but it's a high quality. And so, as I mentioned on the Shrimp Tank podcast, I don't have to do any of that. But I do because I'm running it on Zoom. And we're going to talk about live streaming because I'm live streaming it on Facebook. I'm running it through Zoom. So I have to record it and then download it to uh, on Dropbox to, to the shrimp tank. So I've got to be able to have a good system in place to record. GarageBand is a great place to get the recordings and be able to edit. I know I heard some folks talking about um, you know, what about music and voiceovers and things like that? There are really good platforms and YouTube, I, I use YouTube uh, to go get uh, uh, paid music. As, as you are fully aware, you can't use somebody else's music without paying a royalties for them. Now there is some royalty free music. I chose because I didn't like any of that music uh, I chose to, uh, to pay for it. So I have a monthly subscription to music and audio that I can choose from. I pay for it. It gives me the right. I get licensing to it. And so I'm then able to put it on the front end and the back end of any of the podcasts that I run for Unleash the Podcast. The music on the Shrimp Tank is very unique. The folks over at the Shrimp Tank in Atlanta hired a young man to create our own music. So the music, if you ever listen to any of the Shrimp Tank podcast, the music that you hear there, uh, we created for ourselves, which is, which is kind of cool. But if you have a system like GarageBand, you would be able to import music, import sounds, make sure they're either royalty free or you paid for them because it's important from a, not only from a, a moral and ethical standpoint, but you could get in a lot of trouble for using, using something that's not yours. So I use GarageBand. I don't know what the PC alternative is. Uh, maybe somebody, uh, oh, Dave Clark, uh, Audacity is used by uh, PC users. I've heard of Audacity um, and, and Nikki says that's great. So thank you for sharing that. I think Lindy had asked about where you host it or where you have it as a platform. Uh, I use Buzzsprout. I use Buzzsprout for Unleash the Podcast. 
Buzzsprout has, I think I, I pay something like $13 a month, $14 a month for it. And it allows me to drop my audio into a pot ready to go podcast platform. From that point, I'm able to actually go in and sign up with platforms like Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Pandora Podcasts, and Amazon Music. That's where my podcasts for Unleash the Podcast live. The cool thing is, is those are all free. Uh, all you have to do is sign up for them. And Buzzsprout is, is one of the, 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 the places that does that. It's easy. I just go into, into the place where it says uh, all of the different uh, places I can get it. And right there from that website, subscribe. So every time I drop in a new podcast, it automatically does all the work of sending it out for me. I don't have to do that. So if you're doing your own personal podcast or you're doing it even professionally, you don't have to go uh, to each one individually necessarily. You can do it all through uh, the work of Buzzsprout. I found that to be incredibly simple. I wanna get back to the, to the solo and the co-hosts and if you're gonna do interviews. Uh, I like doing interviews. That's just me. Uh, I, I enjoy the opportunity to learn from other people. Uh, whether they are CEOs of other businesses or experts in business or in life. Like I said, like I, when I had Darren and when I had Karen and Rob on, you may not want to do an interview podcast, uh, but think about what you listen to. I know almost all of the podcasts I listen to are, are interviews. Uh, some of what you might listen to are individual. Individuals would be hard. Uh, if you're just doing it by yourself, it would be hard. You may have noted, I said, I do a mix on my Unleash the Podcast. What I started doing was I, I do a lot of writing and I realized that sometimes people might actually just want to listen to what I wrote uh, while they're working. So I started uh, narrating. So it's, while I'm not interviewing anybody, I actually have a script. I'm reading uh, my article or my column that I put out so that somebody can listen to it while they're doing something else. Other than that, I like to interview. The solo and the co-host, that's gonna be your, your call. Uh, I, I really like the dynamic of co-hosts, uh, but it's something that you would have to find somebody who you feel real confident in, that you have a good rapport with, uh, that you're not talking over each other all the time. And that takes, that takes work. That takes some building up. I know that when Brad and I started, we, we, we had to work on that a little bit. And then it, you get to a point when you've done enough that it works. Will you add video? I'm a big believer in video. Uh, even, even though these are podcasts and people are listening to them, there is a growing group of uh, entertainment watchers that use YouTube, especially a younger generation will have YouTube on and they'll use, I, I've talked to many of them, they'll use the closed captions to, to be able to watch and listen while, they're, while they've got it on the TV. I think the ability, if, if you're willing to do it, the ability to have a platform for both, you're reaching more people. There are some people who just want the audio. There are some people who just want the video. If you're able to do that, I think it helps you out tremendously. Uh, let me give you an example of how Zoom makes it really easy. And I know there's other places that, that do that as well, but I, I like Zoom. So when I go on a live stream, I am able through Zoom to connect with either Facebook Live or YouTube. Zoom makes it really easy to connect with both. I can, I, I've chosen Facebook uh, because I feel like I have a larger subscription group in my Facebook pages than I do in YouTube. So that's why I use Facebook. But I will connect directly to Facebook on the live stream. And then I'm off and running. I make sure I'm recording, of course, first. I've done that before. And we probably all have where I did not click, uh, where I did not click on record. So do that first. But then get used to the fact that 
you're having a conversation. This could be a live stream podcast that I might be running. Right here, right now, I could be running a live stream podcast that is on Facebook or on YouTube. And I enjoy that. If you don't, if you don't want to get dressed up, if you don't want to worry about lights, keep with the audio. But if you want to kind of go out and, and, and really take your speaking and your communicating and, and your influencing and your storytelling to a whole nother area, this live streaming, this YouTube uh, or Zoom, however you want to run that is really a good option. Uh, sponsorships to monetize. Sponsorships to monetize. Um, on my Shrimp Tank podcast, I have to monetize. I mentioned that to you uh, because it costs a lot for me to be a licensee. And so what I've done, I mentioned that I brought in four co-hosts. Uh, how I decided to monetize was each one of my co-hosts take a week. And they have the same week every month. And each of them are paying a fee as the title sponsor and the co-host. And they're paying it directly to me. And I've also brought in sponsors like Port Ludlow Resort, the Kitsap Sun, uh, West Bay Auto Parts. These are some of my new sponsors who are coming in and they are paying a small fee for me to talk about them being my sponsor, to put it on my social media. That is how I am monetizing my, that one podcast right now, monetizing means breaking even. And I'm good with that. I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, breaking even works. I haven't made a decision on what I'm going to do with Unleash the Podcast because I don't know how much effort I want to go doing into sponsorships. There is a company called Patreon. Um, if you are sitting here in front of me, I'd, I'd add you to, ask you to nod your head maybe if you've heard of Patreon. Uh, Patreon is a really, really great and easy way to bring, oh, I see some thumbs up. Okay, it's a new way. I got the thumbs up coming. That's perfect. Is a really great way to, uh, to, to get that and to be able to support and fund for maybe as little as two or three bucks a, a month for some people. So that's a great way to monetize. I know that we are getting close here to the break. Uh, I think, Joanna, I'm at about a, a two minute mark before the break. Is that correct? That is correct, sir. Okay. So what I'd like to do is I want to take a quick peek here before we take the break and check my chat. I know I saw a, a, a question here. How long is your podcast? Great question. My Shrimp Tank podcast is 45 minutes long. My Unleash the Podcast is about 20. Notice that with two hosts, I'm going 45. With one host, I'm going about half that time. There's a reason for that. Most of the podcasts that you will probably find that are interview-based range in the 45-minute range, and you rarely see it longer than an hour. One of my favorite podcasts I listen to is Alan Alda's. I don't know if you realize, everybody probably knows who Alan Alda is, right? Uh, from going back to the days of MASH or, or to all of the other great things he's done. Alan Alda is in his uh, mid-80s, and he is an avid podcaster. He has a podcast on science, and uh, it was interesting that some of the great guests he has, but even his podcast is limited to about 40 to 45 minutes. So my recommendation to you is you want to be somewhere in that 20 to 45-minute range. Let me see here. I got a lot of different, whoops, that happens sometimes. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, let me see here. Any other questions? Um, Anchor.fm also is a dis distribution platform. Great. I think I've heard of Anchor.fm as well. So uh, is, would this be a good point? I've got uh, the next slide to go to. That would be a good break point. Would this be a good point? to take that five minute break? Yes, sir, it's, you're right on time. Okay, great. We'll take that five minute break. And when we come back with more of today's Toastmasters podcast, we'll answer more of your questions. Thank you. We'll start again at 7.43.
Dan, there are a few questions in the chat that people are posting. Would you like to wait to address that? Yeah, I'm trying to I'm trying to read them all as, as they're coming in. Some will come under direct message, some some are not. And so I'm trying to 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 go through those. But um, I think I I think what I'll do is when we come back, I will try to answer the ones that have not already been answered so far. I think there's a general question from Patrick in reference to how you can remove your reaction. It's a timed format, Patrick, so it'll go away after a little bit. If you click on it again, I think it'll stay up longer. Dan, I have 743. Ready, ready to roll? I say go ahead. Okay. Hey, welcome back, everybody. I feel like I'm coming back from one of my commercial breaks in my podcast. Uh, it's funny. Uh, just some thoughts before I open it up, because I really, like I said, I, I like having conversations this is one of those that there, there's a lot of opportunities to share. Uh, I mentioned <laughs> that Joanna was my producer today. I wanna spend a little time talking about producers and the importance of help. 
So while I run the Unleashed, the podcast by myself, there's not a lot of, of other work that needs to be done. It's a fairly simple podcast and a fairly simple show. I've got usually one guest or I'm just narrating. When you get into a little bit more of a high profile podcast like I do with the Shrimp Tank, uh, I have to have a producer because it's impossible to try to run everything by yourself. One of the questions that came up early was scripting. And I'm going to talk about that now as, along with the producer. Uh, I use my producers to keep me on time. Uh, I am running my podcast right here from my desktop. We do it. We do them all virtually. Uh, I do consider YouTube to be a platform for, um, for, uh, for podcasting. In fact, YouTube uh, is the most searched platform uh, outside of Google itself. As, as we know, Google owns YouTube, but people go to YouTube all the time to, to find answers and solutions to their questions. And so I, in order for me to be able to focus my attention on the format, on the show, on my guest, and on my co-host, uh, I need a producer. So if you're going to run a 45-minute podcast, say, and you're going to have somebody you're interviewing, even if, you're, even if you don't have a co-host, I highly recommend finding a producer, somebody who's in the background, uh, who is helping you stay on time. Uh, I know with the producer I have for the, the podcast, we use text. We don't use chat. Uh, because chat can, can become a little bit overwhelming. So I have my phone right next to me and we chat that way. We text back and forth and I'll get the five minutes to five minutes before a commercial or whatever it is. So producers are, are incredibly valuable to make sure that you can be the talent. Uh, one of the questions early was, what do you do about scripting? Here's what I do. I script my open and my close, and I outline the in-between. So if I have a guest, say if I'm interviewing Lindy, because I can see Lindy right here. So I'm, I'm, if I'm interviewing Lindy, when I come onto the show, I know exactly what I'm going to say. I'm going to welcome the audience. I'm going to remind them who I am. I'm going to then tell them where they can find me. You might, if you've listened to any of my podcasts, you might say, you know, we're all over, we're, we're wherever you get your podcast, we're ubiquitous, we're on. And then I tell them where we are. Today's guest is Lindy McLean, and she's going to tell us about when she finished third in the World Championship of Public Speaking. So I introduce my guest, who they are, and then I'm going to ease into a conversation. I don't script my conversations. I don't tell my guests what I'm going to ask them. Why? because I want this to be a genuine conversation. I think scripted conversations, I hate to say this, are boring. And if one thing a podcast can't be, it can't be boring. So I don't script that. But when we get to the end, I have the end scripted out. Oh, I, I, I just lied to you. On, on, the pod, on the Shrimp Tank podcast, I have two commercial areas, two commercial spots for sponsors. I tease in and I tease out, or I tease in and then I bring it out. So I have those scripted as well. So anywhere that you want to be right, that you want to be good, scripted out, put the scripting where it's easy to read in big print. At 56 years old, I don't always need my glasses, but I don't want to be squinting and I don't want to misread something. So I make the print really big. And, and I, that's where I script. So anything that I want to make sure that word for word almost, I want to get right, I'll script that out. And then I'll have a list of the questions that I want to ask, but always, always be flexible. Because if you're interviewing somebody, it should be like you're sitting and having a cup of coffee with them. If Lindy says something to me that really gets my attention and I have a follow-up question, I'm going to ask it just like I would if we were having a cup of coffee together. I think Lindy drinks tea, but that's beside the point. Okay. So anyway, uh, producers are important. Scripting is important, but also be ready to be real. 
to be in the moment, and by the way, to make mistakes. I, I like to live stream. I think I'm better, personally, I think I'm better when I'm under pressure because it's in real time rather than trying to record something. But I make mistakes. We all make mistakes. We've done it on the platform. And, and here you are, if you're recording live on a live stream, you may make a mistake. Get used to, to, to making that mistake and finding a way to come out of it. I've always appreciated the Johnny Carson uh, pattern of coming out of a mistake. He'd do a self-deprecating joke about himself, right? For all of those of you who remember Johnny Carson, he would, he would make a self-deprecating remark and move on. And that's what I've tried to do. So uh, I'm going to open it up in just a second, but I promise this to somebody. Uh, this is where you can follow me. And here's, here's what I'd like to offer to each one of you. I, I never want to just give stuff to people. If you don't want it, uh, that's fine. But I want to make this slide show available to anybody who wants it. And it's free for those who want it. There's only one thing that you have to do. And that's if you are, if you already are, or if you do, I'd like you to subscribe to one of these podcasts. Send me a screenshot, send me an email, tell me you subscribe to the Shrimp Tank or to Unleash the Podcast, and I will send you uh, not only this, um, not only this, uh, this slide deck, but I'll send you a, a kind of a checklist on how to get your own podcast started. So that's all free. Uh, one of the things I love about podcasting is they're free. If you want to get something better and become a patron member, you can do that. But these are all free. This is where you find me, the Shrimp Tank Podcast for Seattle and Unleash the Podcast. So what I'd like to do is I'd li like to leave this up and uh, I'd like to use the remaining time uh, to have a conversation, to ask questions, to open it up. What I, I, I don't mind the chat, but I really want to hear from you. And I want to run this very similar to what I would be doing if I was interviewing you or if you were interviewing me. I'd like you to raise your hand. Joanna will help out. And then I want to have a conversation. What did I miss? What did I not answer well enough? Uh, what could I answer better? And uh, what new questions may have come up from what you've heard so far? By the way, my email is dan at danweeden.com. I, I thought I'd put that on there. How about that? I didn't. Dan at danweeden.com. I went ahead and added it for you in the chat, sir. I saw that. That's what prompted me. It's like, oh, that would have been smart. But anyway. So what, there is a question while we're waiting for people to put their hands up. Joyce Vick asked if there was a lesson that you learned each time that you had a podcast. That's a Joyce. That's a great question. Uh, yeah, there, there's a I, there probably is a lesson I've learned each time, and one of the less probably the biggest lesson uh, I would I would say is I'll give you two lessons if that's okay. Lesson number one was if you're interviewing somebody, uh, not everybody's a toastmaster. <laughs> not everybody that you might interview is is confident. Uh, in fact, sometimes they're worried. One of the funniest stories I ever have is, is uh, in the shrimp tank when we were doing this in a studio back in the old days, pre-COVID, right? Uh, we were doing this in a studio and we handed out these little shrimp, these like foam shrimp. And we had a guest on who had actually been on the Food Network. It was on a, one of the cooking shows. She was a contestant. She did really well. But she was so nervous during the podcast, she completely destroyed this little, this little sh toy shrimp. And so one of the things I learned is be very encouraging and give as much information in advance to your interview folks so that they can be prepared and confident. Uh, and there's a, a real skill in helping them guide to do that. The other thing I also learned uh, from an internal standpoint is just like if you are on a platform, you want to have high energy. Now, you don't want to be false. You want to be who you are. That's got to come through. But especially if somebody can't see you, 
you have to keep them interested and you have to have a slightly higher energy level than you might conceive that your audience member has. But yeah, I'm learning all the time. Dan, we have a question from Robin Lee. Hi, Robin. Hi, my question is regarding um, like how much value you get from having the, the paid, you're paying for the thing that you do through Atlanta versus if you're just creating your own thing and it's not being through a, something that you're having to get sponsored? I think it's a difference between professional and hobby, Robin. Um, I, I think that the value that I get in return for what I'm paying for them is uh, I am getting a broader reach. I am getting uh, all of the marketing. I'm getting all of the editing. Uh, I'm getting the ability to be on iHeartRadio, uh, which I wouldn't probably be able to do on my own. That's one place that takes a little bit more work to get into. And so it really comes down to um, if I was just doing it as a hobby, which I kind of doing with Unleash the Podcast, even though I'm using it as part of my business, um, you can certainly get away with doing it at no cost. But if you, you're going to do it as part of what who your professional identity is, I found great value in being able to have them as a help. Did, did that answer your question? Absolutely. That was okay. very good. Thanks. Thank you. Next, we have Karen Tyson. Hi, Karen. Hi, Dan. This has been fantastic. Oh, thank you. How, how do you get feedback if you really want to know if you're reaching your audience? How do, I just want to clarify your question. How do you get feedback on how you're doing or if they're even listening or, or is that what you're asking? I guess so. I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm trying to reach parents. Um, so I, I don't know if they're, they're listening and if they're listening, whether they're getting anything out of it. Okay. So, how, so where I, I, I want to have a little conversation here with you. Where, where are you posting your podcasts? Okay. Right now I'm not doing po podcasts. I'm doing um, zoom. Okay. And they're, um, but parents are kind of overloaded with zoom. So I, I post it to Facebook and, um, and there are, there, I can see that they're look, looking at it. Well, on one of the Facebook. things, Karen, you might, you might consider is going to a podcast format for parents. That's an, yeah. that, that not, not only turns it into audio and then ask for, uh, ask not only for them to rate, but to, to respond to you. They, on a, on a podcast, uh, people, can, excuse me, both rate and review. Tell them, I, I, I really value your input. Please go on and review. By the way, when they review, that helps uh, build your, your branding as well. It, it makes it easier for people to search and find you. So there's a great value in rating and reviewing, but create an, a, a, a platform for them to review and then ask them to, re, to review and to send in uh, questions and comments to you. So is that a separate feature of podcasting? That yeah, you have to it's, set up? it's part. It's part of it. So let's say you went into Buzzsprout or one of the others, and you started creating uh, podcasts, and you decided that you were going to be on Spotify and Stitcher, and I'll just use Spotify because that's popular. There's a place to review on Spotify, and then you're able to go in the back channels and see all the reviews. Now, do you have to go to all the platforms that you end up being on or is it yeah. consolidated? But if you're, if you're, okay. if, let's say you're on three or four, it doesn't take that long. Or okay. if you post them on Facebook, you can post the podcast on Facebook and ask them to, to review or to uh, at least collaborate with you, with you on the comments section. So I think the okay. biggest thing I would say to you is, is ask for it. Uh, too many times, I don't think people, people don't necessarily say, I'd like you to comment. And this is where I'd like you to comment. And then you can get some feedback. Thank you. Sure. Okay. Dan, you have Elena Brenna and then Hong Fan. Hola, Elena. Como estas? Muy bien, Daniel. Como estas? <laughs> <laughs> One day we'll do, maybe we'll do a podcast together in Spanish. 
All right, that would be great. And you're sharing so much great information tonight, Dan. As an old radio person, I, I love the idea of podcasting. I listen to a lot of them, and I think I'm going to have to do one of my own one of these days. Now, I get the impression of Shrimp Tank is on once a week, and I didn't get the frequency of Unleashed. It's every two weeks. It's, it's going to be every two weeks now. Okay, yeah, that, that was really my question. What is your opinion about frequency? What's sort of the minimum frequency? You know, it would once a month be too little? Would... Once a month is too little. I think uh, every two weeks is probably the edge of it. I think you'll find that most, what I would call professional podcasts are weekly. Right, yeah, that's uh, what I'm I, listening to. Yeah, and what I will share is, is, is one of the reasons I started Unleash the Podcast was, I knew my co-host was probably going at the shrimp tank was going to have to leave. And I knew he was going to, I wasn't a hundred percent positive of where the shrimp tank was going to go. If I, if they wanted me to stay, which they did, uh, if I could afford to stay, which I figured out a way to do, um, I, I wanted a backup and that's why I started unleash the podcast. Uh, but now because of, of what we're moving on with the shrimp tank, I am redeveloping the hobby one into an every two week uh, and, and really focusing on some different kind of life issues as opposed to business. So that was kind of how that came about. But my professional podcast is weekly. Thanks, Dan. Is it my turn? Yeah, I, I don't know. I, 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 I'm, I'm waiting for my producer to tell me, but go ahead, Hong. <laughs> Okay, first of all, thank you very much for all the valuable information that you're sharing with thank us you. today. And I have a, kind of like a three part question. Um, oh, you must think that I have a good memory. Well, let's take one at a time here. <laughs> well, you've been able to answer all the questions that's been posed to you so okay. far. So, very good, Dan. Uh, I was curious on how the guests come to you do you go looking for them or they come to you and how do you qualify or do you qualify them research their background so to formulate your questions and then the other thing is how far out uh, in terms of uh, a scheduling do you have uh, so that you know that you will have podcasts in the yep. future so so great questions on guests uh I started out when I first started podcasting, I invited people I knew. Number one is uh, if I messed up, then uh, it was messed up with a friend, so to speak, right? Uh, but as I've grown, I've been able to use referrals as such. So I gain referrals from past guests. I always ask my past guests for referrals uh, because they, they'll know people. Uh, I also in my business networks, uh, it's funny, I'm, I'm, I'm doing these all on Zoom, but I'm in a couple networks where uh, there's kind of a needs, deals, and wants type of a question. I always ask at the end, uh, do you know anybody who'd like to be on my podcast? And it's either them or a client that they know. So I have found that simply asking uh, the right people to get referrals has helped. The question about qualifying, uh, yeah, the, I, I do qualify them for the shrimp tank they need to be the owner of a business in some form or fashion. It could be executive director of a nonprofit, uh, could be the CEO, could be the founder, but I want them to be the, the, the owner or at least executive of the business. Uh, on Unleash the Podcast, I will bring in interesting people. I kind of feel like this. If I find you interesting, I bet you somebody else out there will. And, and then I will, I will bring you in. And as far as... Uh, 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 getting people out on a list. Uh, I'm booking into August right now for shrimp tank and that's a weekly. I am. So I have, I have, uh, I have uh, the next two and a half months, three months booked out. And there's two reasons for that. Number one is uh, I'm a little bit anal on that side. I don't like not having a guest uh, coming up a few weeks down the road, but the other is stuff happens and sometimes I've had, you know, family emergencies on a guest. I can't make it. And it's like two days before I have a, a plethora of potential people who might be willing to move up and fill that spot. And I don't have to work as hard to, to get that done. I hope that answered all three of your questions. Yes, it did. And may I add one more very quickly? Yes, 
Sure. Somebody asked on here and I didn't hear you answer or maybe I missed it, is how do you make your voice deeper on a podcast? Because some of us have squeaky voice sometimes <laughs> and it, it may not transmit uh, as, you know, uh, preferable by the audience. So is there- I've never tried or... to make my voice deeper. Um, I, <laughs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. Um, diaphragm, use your diaphragm. You know what? Uh, and there are probably some tools. I've never done this, but there probably are some tools on GarageBand or on some of the others that might be able to change that. That I'm not an expert on. Uh, but I think uh, if I can give you one piece of advice, don't worry about it. Fall in love with your voice except your voice is your voice. It's kind of one of those things that when we first got into Toastmasters, people would say, I don't like hearing me speak. Get used to it. It is your voice and, and that's okay. Thank you. All right, Dan, we have a caller and the name is iPhone. That's all I have for you right now, but. iPhone, you're, you're on the, you're on, you're on the you're phone. On with me. iPhone, go for it. Maybe they got tired of waiting for. Oh, me. by the way, Lindy said voice coaching. Thank you, Lindy. <laughs> Great. Great call. Why don't we move on to Hazel Booth for just a second? And then. All right, Hazel. Circle back. Hey, thanks, Dan. This was amazing. Okay. So, I've actually been doing some exploring about podcasts. I have been challenged to do something like that. And, um, one of the things I was wondering about is when you're doing your narratives, like if you were doing it a solo and you were sharing something that you had written, yes. I know you're just doing the podcast and so nobody knows if you're reading, but if you were to be doing a video, would that be problematic? Because we're so used to like focusing on the camera and keeping eye contact and all of that. If you were reading and doing back and forth, would it be just as distracting as if you were giving a speech? Well, think of it this way. If you were up on stage or you were, let's make it this way. If you're watching somebody on stage on a platform, giving a presentation and all they were doing had their notes in front of them and were reading it, would you find that distracting? So you're saying if you were just reading, you would just not do the video piece at all. I don't do video. Just, yeah. Just if on all of the narrative, the reason I'm actually narrating them is because I think there are people out there like me who say I can listen to a great column or a great article and still work and not have to watch the person on. That's the only reason I started doing them was to be a part of my blog. So on my blog, when it comes out, it'll say, listen, and you can either listen to it or read it. That's the only reason I started doing it. Okay, so that's a good way, I like that. Yeah. So the other thing that you didn't mention it, but I was just gonna say, um, I've heard it's good practice when you're getting ready to start a podcast to have like, eight of them in the can before you publish one because it can take that much time for you to kind of find your rhythm and figure out how things work and you talked about being booked out and one gal i've been listening to she's like got 40 sessions all done in advance which might make it kind of hard to stay current depending on what her topic is but that's something interesting so here's here's one thing and and there's a there's pros and cons to either recording or live streaming i can tell you this before live streaming, when I was in the studio, we still did them live. Uh, I have never, <laughs> I've never uh, just done eight and, and gone on. Every one I've ever done has either been live, has been live streamed some way. So uh, I'm, I'm kind of, again, this is a speaker thing. Get up and speak, get used to it, get, be prepared to make mistakes and to learn along the way. Um, I'd rather get, I'd rather get the information out to people. That's just me. Um, I like the live streaming version. I like that. I hadn't thought about it that way. The last thing I wanted to share is I was listening to an old Tim Ferriss YouTube hmm. video today. Yeah. And one thing that I jotted down, he was talking about the, uh, you know, sometimes I hold myself back cause I don't want to risk doing that. Yeah. Showing up. And he said, you know, risk is the likelihood of an irreversible negative outcome. And there's not that many true risks. Right. And so making a mistake or screwing something up small like that is not irreversible. So this just is just little... like speaking. This is just like Toastmasters. It really is. Yeah. Uh, get out there and, and, and give it your best. And, and people want to hear from you. So thank and you. Perfect's not very relatable. So right. thank you. 
All right, and to keep us perfectly on time, Dan, um, we do have Michael Schmidt and then C. Miller. Yes, I see. I see. I see C. Miller. I don't see Michael, but I'll listen to he's both. He's your of them. hand. That's he's. The oh, he's the hand. Okay. Hey Dan, uh, I know that this has been probably covered, but uh, I'm using a blue Yeti as well, and your voice just sounds very clear. Uh, mine doesn't sound as clear to myself. Now, do you run that um, with no no other software? You're just running directly into Zoom. Or do you yeah, have something like I, garage band I, I'm just, yeah, I, this Blue Yeti is directly uh, uh, USB ported into my iMac. And then I have uh, this these earbuds that go directly into it. Directly into the Yeti. Yep. I've heard of some people running uh, Zoom meetings, but having something. This one, which. Free, like a uh, garage band or Mixcraft or even Audacity cleaning up their video, cleaning up their audio. You, you don't, you're not using anything like that. You sound I'm not, you sound great. Well, thank you. You sound great too. I, you sound, you sound just fine. So thank you. <laughs> All right, Dan, next you have Sarah Miller. Hello C. I'm sure that stands for something. Yeah. It's Charles. Can you hear me? I can. Hi Charles. All right. So I have uh, a question about uh, the behind the scenes, your producer. How many hats does that person actually wear <laughs> for you to help you make sure that one, you have your guests for the show and making sure that things are scheduled? A lot of hats. Charles, thanks for asking. So uh, let me do pre, during and post. Pre meeting, they work with the guest to bring in all of the things that we can help market. So my producer, who now is, is going to be my wife, Barb, will reach out and get headshots and bios and, and then send out a pre-podcast letter. And on that pre-podcast letter, um, that talks to the guest about, here's how the audio works, here's how lighting, please don't come on with a laptop without any type of microphone. So we prep them and that's the producer's job. At the... Uh, on the day of the producer, the fifth, we get on 15 minutes before the podcast goes live. Our producer will actually give kind of the logistics and, and get uh, the guest prepped more than even me. And then during, she does all of my timing, all of my timing uh, around that to make sure, hey, Dan, well, I shouldn't say it, but she'll text me 10 minutes, five minutes, two minutes, commercial, go to commercial. Uh, all of that. So there's a lot of that behind the scenes. And then post, uh, she then uh, does the follow up with the guests, sending out all of the, the thank you emails and here are the links. So there's actually a lot of work that goes into it, uh, both, uh, well, I guess all three before, during and after. But during, uh, she is my main timekeeper and, uh, and make sure that, oh, also reads the commercials. I don't read the commercials. Uh, during commercials is a great time to, to hydrate. Um, so uh, she also does my commercials. Thank you for asking. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And surprisingly, you have no one else left in your queue. Did Michael Dugan get his question answered? And I see Elena has one as well. Oh, she has another one. Michael Dugan, go ahead. Thank you so much. Dan, I really enjoyed your presentation and it's really inspiring because I've been, I've probably spent about six or seven months working on a podcast behind the scenes. I have 12 episodes right now for season one. Okay. Work full time though. So <laughs> yeah, doing it once a week is very challenging, but my podcast is called Voice for Chefs, honoring chefs and culinary artists because of the pandemic. Yes. And it's very difficult to get them to commit every week because they work 60 hour weeks. Yes. What I really wanted to ask is I'm launching on Saturday with three episodes because I've heard that that's a good way to do it rather than just put one episode out and put several out so people can really get into your podcast. But what I'm curious about is if you have any strategies for the upcoming launch, I've been doing a lot of Facebook, doing a little bit of Instagram. And are they, you know, are they audio only? Audio only. Okay. Um, 
obviously social media is 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 a great way to go. Do you have a do you have a specific page? Do you have a a Facebook page dedicated I have a Facebook to Facebook page that's growing right now. Pardon yep. me. It's growing right now. Great. It's doubled since the past week. I would here's, say. Here's the one thing that I would do. Go in and create uh, two minutes. How, how long is the, the, the podcast? It's about 20 to 35 minutes. Perfect. Is Go get a two minute clip. Find a two, minute, sec- two minute section in there that, okay. you, that you think uh, is, you know, will build uh, momentum and then uh, release these little two minute clips. Okay. She's asking me a question. We're also going to do a launch party um, this Great. the day of, and I have three chefs coming to the launch party from around the country, so I'm Terrific. really excited. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah, uh, that's a great idea. I I guess the one thing I, I kind of just thought is, of is if you can do if you can do some uh, some quick clips that might get people excited about who they're. Going I sure to get mess up an area, can I? Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Um, Anything after the launch to kind of keep it going? Obviously, post it on Facebook and things like that. Well, you need to let people know when the next one's coming out. Okay. You need to make and sure they'll... that they know when the next one's coming out. And if you're pre-doing them, mm-hmm. keep thinking about these sound bites. I know that on Buzzsprout, uh, you can easily create sound bites running from like 30 seconds to a minute. That's right. Uh, and That's and where I I'm really at. highly recommend doing those sound bites. Okay. Yeah. It's 30 to 60 seconds. Um, yep. and I can edit and create my own for yes, two you minutes. Can. Yep. So that's another thought. Okay, good. Yep. Well, thank you. Great. You're welcome. Okay, Dan, we have Yasmin next. Hi, Yasmin. Hello. Can you hear me? I certainly can. Oh, good. I had a question about, um, getting a producer because right now I do have a podcast that I started and, as a side note, I want to thank you very much because I'm a, a young podcaster. I learned a lot from you. So thank you so much for thank you. doing what you did tonight. Thank you. I mean I a lot. It. It's so cool because I'm another person that likes a Mac. And I didn't know <laughs> anything about that garage band. So I appreciate that. Um, and my son was pushing me toward YouTube. So you gave a lot of good pointers that I can use about that. So I appreciate Great. that as well. Thank you. Um, I'm definitely going to subscribe. So Good. I can get that stack sheet that you told about. But um, what I wanted to know was I was thinking about getting a producer, but I don't think I can afford one. Do you have any tips about that? <laughs> well, my producer <laughs> is, I'm, I'm married to my producer. So I, I don't know if I can that. afford that either. <laughs> um, but, <laughs> you know, here, here's, here's something else. See if you can find somebody who might intern for you. Um, uh, kind of our backup producer is my niece who's, uh, freshly out of college, and she's doing some some other things for me, and I'm paying her just a small amount uh, just to help me. But if you might find somebody who is uh, is uh, uh, eager to maybe break in and learn a little bit about podcasting and and doing things like that, um, you may be able to find somebody who is a friendly person that would be willing to help you. They don't need podcast skills; they need organizational skills. Uh, time management, um, you know, uh, sending out emails, things like that. So see if there's somebody in your life, in your world that might be willing to help you out. And you might also see if you can get a couple people so that you, you don't burn one person out. But um, I'm all about going to friends and family that might be willing to help. Okay, that's a good idea. I'm a semi-retired uh, professor. I work at the college, so I definitely could probably oh, there get you go. some college students. Yeah, <laughs> um, and a lot of the work um, in my older life before I did the, the teaching, I used to be administrative assistant. So I really don't need anybody for that kind of stuff. I just need- Listen, um, tell, tell them that you will give them a letter of recommendation for the work that they did for you. So I don't know if she heard that, but you'll, was it Yasmin? Yeah, I'm sorry. I didn't hear that. My husband decided to just zoom the TV up real loud. I'm so okay. sorry. So no, the Aaron, Yasmin, tell tell yes. tell them that you will tell the students that you would give them a a letter of recommendation of based on their work that they did for you. Okay. All right. That sounds like a good one. Thank you so much. I'll go you, back on mute. Okay. <laughs> no, you can still talk. I'm just going to mute myself because my okay, husband no, got I'm, the TV on. Nobody <laughs> has to tell me to talk twice. I so I, 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 tell me twice to talk. So. 
Thank you so much. I'm going to go in and subscribe so I can get the um, information because I saw something else, but um, it went the slide went by too fast. So I'm going to make sure okay. I do that tomorrow. Please Thank do. you. Thank you. You're welcome. And this is Lindy. I'm going to voice a question that Elena put in the chat that also was echoing someone else's, which is someone asked you about preparing the studio for sound. Do you have carpeting on the floors or soft furniture or baffling anything <laughs> to help with reducing the echo or uh, I'm in the basement. I mean, that li literally I'm, 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 I'm in the basement. Um, you know, it is, it is, it is a finished basement. So I have carpeting. Uh, but I think the biggest thing is, is I, I have a door um, and there's, there's, you know, I, I normally, like I said, I don't have the dog dogs are usually not here. Uh, when I, when I actually do the podcast, but basically I'm down here by myself. So there's nothing special. I do by the way, really quick thing. I know James and Charles have a question. You notice my backdrop. Um, I, 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 I think it's really important to get a, uh, a logo. Uh, this is my Unleash the Podcast logo. Um, and uh, to have uh, something like this, if you're going to be on YouTube, the reason is, is I, I have a wall behind me. I don't even have room for the green screen. So I, I had my a graphics person create this. And so uh, think about some sort of background that will be lit, not lighted, but lit, and uh, won't be distracting to somebody watching you on YouTube yet has your logo up there. I'll take James or, or Charles, whoever's next. James right. is next. Thank you. Um, so this is actually following on from your mention of Patreon earlier. And then yes. also Michael's comments about, you know, building buzz and flowing people on there. Several other comments have centered around something related to this. And I've known, and I, in my podcast that I do, I've been working on trying to build a community around it for having dialogue, questions and answers. Um, we got enough, we were actually a little entire episode out of Q and A's from our listeners um, from that community. And it helps to create that, that sense of community around it, but it's hard to get started and it's yes. still very slow. What kinds of, cause I know pa Patreon is all about community and building right. that. So what tips do you have or strategies that you've seen that are most successful for building a thriving community around a podcast or YouTube channel, those kinds of things. Well, and as much as I love Patreon, uh, you have to you have to build it first by making it free. Uh, you know, it, it, it has to be something where, where uh, it's free to get started. Uh, there's got to be some sort, whether it's Facebook, whether, you know, and, and Facebook tends to be uh, the easiest one where people can congregate uh, and start being able to have some sort of a, whether it's a chat room, whether they're answering questions, uh, it is hard. Uh, the best thing you can do is just to kind of keep pounding away at it, uh, asking people to invite others in um, and, and putting out smaller versions. Again, I'm a big believer that if, 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 if you're saying, hey, you got to listen to this whole 20 or 45 minute clip to get interested, I might not listen to it. But if you can get people engaged with one or two minute uh, sound bites, uh, it's important. The other one is 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 if you can find uh, guests that don't have to be celebrities, so to speak, but have uh, some sort of connection with them. Uh, it's really the long game. I hate to say that. I know everybody. It, it's be fun to get everybody involved quickly, but it's really the long game, and it's just about being consistent. That's why in every week. Uh, podcast works. That's why uh, not missing anything works. So the other one too, James, is consider getting a newsletter, getting a newsletter and, and, and building a community through having a newsletter that goes out. Yeah. I've been using a Discord server and just throwing memes at them regularly. Okay. Worked pretty well. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you. And Dan, Charles Miller will be your last question for this session. All right. Make it a good one, Charles. I will do my best. I will definitely do my best. So you did touch on a couple of things that I already talked about that you that I wanted to ask you, and the logo was one. Um, but how is important is it to have that stuff before you launch the show? Or should you just, if you know you want to start the show and you haven't put those things together yet, should you still launch or should you wait to have those things lined up? <laughs> you know, Charles, it's funny you say that. I, I have been accused of being a ready, shoot, aim kind of guy. And... Um, 
I, I like getting started now. What I will say is that in both these cases, I had the pod, I had the logos in advance. Good. I think the logo is important. I think if yeah. you want to start, and, and it doesn't, I mean, the logo can change later, but I think you need to have some sort of branding initially. Yeah. You can get by with not having a lot of other things, but I highly rec rec recommend having the branding before you get started. Okay. All right. And as far as the social media presence, do you think that is also equally as important as making yes. sure you're on Twitter, Instagram? Yeah. Uh, Instagram, you know, I didn't bring up Instagram. I, uh, Instagram is, is important as well. You're finding, because the cool thing about those sound bites is you can put them in a 30 or 45 second sound bite that fits on an Instagram. Gotcha. And they're made specifically for Instagram and Twitter for that reason. So yes, find a place. You need at least one place where you're going to congregate that community. So social media is, is uh, really important about that. Yes. All right. And the last part of this is, I know you mentioned earlier, and I kind of missed part of it, that you stream your show. Yes. Do you think that brings, if you're not there yet, just, you should, do you, do you think you should wait to get a camera and start streaming? Or you say, just create the podcast and then get your camera when you can get it. I would create the audio podcast first and deal with video later. And gotcha. the reason there's a couple of reasons I say that. Number one is you really want to build your confidence uh, from your voice first before you start adding. I better, I got to look good too. I got to worry about my background. I got to worry about my hair. I got to worry about my makeup, whatever it is. Uh, start with audio, build an audience, and then you can always bring in the live stream later. So when okay. I told you that we were streaming the podcast originally before COVID, that was audio only. We okay. were not doing live videos. <laughs> I did not start live streaming until about 14 months ago, gotcha. video wise. Everything, okay. was, everything was audio before that. So I'd recommend if you're just getting started, get really comfortable and confident in the audio part you can always add the video later okay thank you i appreciate that sure dan any final comments yeah just a reminder uh yeah subscribe to one of these send me something that uh and i'm not going to check your work but just send me something that you you subscribed and i will send you uh not only the um not only the slides, but also kind of a checklist to go through them. What I will tell you is, is that um, even if you send them to me, I will probably get these all out over the weekend. So if you don't get an immediate response from me other than a thank you, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to use the weekend to get these all out. But please, uh, I'm, I'm happy to share all of this and, and send me questions. Uh, Dan at danweeden.com. I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you, Dan. I'm going to take over from you if you want to stop sharing or whatever's doing, and I'm going to help us get wrapped up here so we can move on to the rest of our evenings. First of all, I want to thank you all for coming. I've seen lots of comments in the chat about people saying how much value they've received tonight, and that's up to you, Dan. Thank you. It's really our pleasure here at Professionally Speaking to be able to provide these extra special education events quarterly. When you get the feedback survey from Eventbrite following this event, we ask that you fill it out. Part of that is helping us to know what topics are of interest to you in the future. Also, another thing to ask of you, if you've enjoyed tonight, please consider signing up for our newsletter. Elena is going to put in the chat the link to sign up for the Professionally Speaking newsletter because that's one place where you will be able to hear about upcoming events like this that will be of value to you. And finally, I want to make sure to invite you to our next regular meeting, which is on Thursday, May 6th, one week from tonight. Our usual meetings are specially focused on evaluation. We have two or three speakers per meeting and each speaker gets four separate evaluations plus a round robin. That's about 17 minutes of evaluation. I'm a walking testimonial getting to third place on the international speech contest 
and recently winning the district evaluation contest is all to this club. So please do come. Again, Elena's putting a link in the, in the uh, chat about how you can get signed up for our next meeting. And if there's any question at all, go to prospeakerclub.com. There's also instructions there about how to get in touch with us and sign up for upcoming meetings. Again, thank you all for being here tonight. We look forward to interacting with you in the future. And I wanna wish you all a wonderful evening. Good night to all of you. Thank you, Dan, so much.